Showing off our suite, so up here we're at the Olney State Forest, it's called the Pines Campground. Um, got in okay, there's a few little potholes in the dirt road getting in, but um, it's nothing too bad, just to get a bit slow. It was a bit steep getting up, that altitude was not lying, it was like 400 meters up. <laughs> the engine was, yeah, beeping, so I had to stop and let it cool down halfway, but so such it is life I guess. Anyway, check out the setup over here. It's just gorgeous here. I was just saying to Amanda because all the state forests in New South Wales are dog friendly and free to camp in. You can camp anywhere in them. Um, so we might just do a tour of state forests getting north until we get to Queensland. Wouldn't be a bad way to go. Free camp the whole way. Some fire pits around already. We might, I don't know if we'll use ours or not. Certainly got a lot of timber to get through. I'm gonna go have some lunch. Enjoy. near the camp site that we're at um, there's a little walk to a couple of little waterfall creeks um, and you can bring the dogs which is really nice you gotta go for a walk with the doggies and let them explore too so um, we're just kind of exploring following the tracks we don't really know I don't actually know what it's called if it has a name um, it, I'm sure it does I just don't know what it is 
if it is, I'll uh, let you know if I find out. We have no phone reception on internet um, here, so I can't just do a quick Google. So um, I'll have to do that when we get back to reception, see if it does have a name. But yeah, it should be pretty. So um, definitely add that to your list. Hey, hey. <laughs> We're about to go off for another ride in the Wadigans, um, Old New State Forest. I'm going to try and find a place called Abbott Falls. We'll see how we go. Um, I've heard about it. <laughs> we'll see. We'll have fun. See you soon. Hey, <laughs> this is all a bit of fun. Um, oh, covered in cobwebs. So we're in the Olney State Forest, and this is where we're camping for the night. And uh, I've got the Suron out. If you don't know, the Suron is an electric motorbike. Uh, say electric, cross between an electric dirt, uh, dirt bike and uh, an electric mountain bike. So I'll pop you around, you can have a look. See, I got my little sticker on there. But uh, the whole thing it weighs about 50 kilos. Top speed is about 80 kilometers an hour. Um, that's like very top speed though. You're pushing it to get to that. And range is between like, between about, I got about 30 kilometers when I was doing like 80 kilometers an hour on the road about 29 kilometers I think and that was with the engine like the power just about cutting out um, but then if you're only doing slow track work um, you can get upwards of like 50 to 100 kilometers apparently I haven't pushed it yet I haven't found out but um I wouldn't I think that's probably true like I've been blasting around the state forest for 45 minutes now I think 40 minutes and I'm at 88 percent battery left so that's pretty good. Um, I am a complete and utter novice at off-road motorbiking. <laughs> um, I've done about, this has 367 kilometers on it, the Suron, and probably about 50 kilometers of that is off-road that I've done, and that's my only off-roading experience ever. So <clears throat> I've got a fair bit of on-road experience, but not for five, six years now. Um, yeah, it's pretty much just been off-road, so so it's pretty much just been on-road. So now I'm learning the off-road side and really enjoying it. It's a lot of fun, actually. 
And this place is like a playground for it. It's really enjoyable. <laughs> anyway, on with the show. Here. I reckon I'll be able to get back up today. I hope I can get back up this. I'm in a world of two otherwise. Lost it. Holy shit. Whew. We're down low now. Oh, mother. Sorry, but I don't know if you're venomous or not, mate. Otherwise, I wouldn't kill you. Oh, can you imagine getting a fucking spider bite down here? You'd be fucked. Oops. I just walked over. <laughs> Make it up this. I think I will. Good. That's a cow. That's the question. This is gonna be a fucking challenge getting up, I tell you. Oh, fuck no. It keeps going. No, fuck that. I reckon I'm done. It's hot as fuck. Whew. 
Så tager jeg dig op. Det er meget reasonable choices. It's this little bit and then I'll be all right. There's no traction. So much for riding. It's gonna be a long ride home. It's gonna be like this. All right. Now, hopefully the rest of it, I can ride. Get a bit of momentum up, I think. Up a little. Ah. Ah. I think it's up the next big bit. That was sketchy as sketchy. Far out. I am like buggered. I feel like I'm bleeding as well from that branch. Am I? Thanks, GoPro. Oh my god, I'm sweat. That was hard work getting up that. Um, yeah. Let me know if you reckon a gas bike would have done it. Um, I don't know. I haven't really ridden a gas dirt bike before, so I don't really know whether it would have made it up that hill or not. It was more a traction issue. It wasn't a power issue, it was a traction issue. But I guess on a gas bike you might be able to just nail it and get yourself up by just spinning the rear wheel on stuff until it grips like a four-wheel drive. It's not really a good way to do it, I don't think so. I think the like controlled way is a bit better on the electric bike. So you just, yeah, so all of that so far and I'm on 78% battery, so that's pretty bloody good. Cut out is about 10%, like that's when you're really dead in the water pretty much. Um, but yeah, I've got a little while back to go now and um, I know a really fun little single track that I did yesterday without filming and I'll try and get back onto that and show you guys. That was pretty fun. That was some gnarly mud yesterday, I don't really want to clay mud, I don't really want to go back down in there. But anyway, let me know what you think. <laughs> On with the show.
jump on and tell you um we were only originally planning like two nights in the Wadigans but um we loved it so much and we did it we were doing okay with water this morning that we decided to stay a third night in also saying that when we left Belmont we were meant to do a bit of shopping just to top up of a few things the fresh stuff um so that we could you know have enough fresh you know vegetables and stuff for our next few days but we missed the turn off to the shops that had the easiest parking for our truck and caravan so we didn't get to do our shopping so tonight so for our food i've had to really plan it out for the last couple of days and then i've had to even think a bit more out of the square for tonight's dinner and we're doing really makeshift burgers and chips so they're not even burgers they're going to be burger patties like that i've homemade um on wraps with tomato cheese and carrot <laughs> and bacon <laughs> because that's all we have with some frozen chips um but we've got plenty of water and we'll survive so um it's probably a good thing like today we have burritos on wraps kind of thing because we have burrito mix already frozen in the freezer that's been sitting there for the whole eight weeks that we've been on the road that we haven't used so it was good good opportunity to clear out some of the other stuff in the freezer um that we've had sitting there for a little while as well and sort of start fresh with planning some meals uh for the next week or so um and we'll probably do a bit of a shop tomorrow morning um, when we get to our next venture. Morning. Thought I'd quickly show you what we got to wake up to this morning. This view. So we wake up to empty forest all the way around us it's so lovely right look up out the front out the side literally everywhere all windows open because the weather is perfect and um yeah all windows open hatch open and we got to wake up to the cicadas and birds in the bush, in the forest, because it's pine forest, basically. Really, really nice. Free dog camp, dog friendly camp. Do you know what we're going to do today? We might um, go for a drive. There's a couple of lookouts around. Um, there's, and I know there's a couple of waterfalls and stuff, but most of them are in the national park. So um, we're trying to decide whether we go and have a look at them and how we deal with the dogs while we're there. So, um, yeah, we'll see. We might have to um, just see what the temperature's like as well, because we might have to leave them in the van um, if it's not too hot. And, um, yeah, we just don't know. We just don't know what to do about them yet. Because um, we could take them in the truck with us and then leave them in the truck if it's not too hot, but then we don't want to get there and then it'd be hotter at those places and then not be able to leave them in the truck and all those things. So um, this is our first time that we haven't been able to get a dog sort of sitter nearby um, and actually attempt a national park. So, um, and I really want to do one of like, there's a walk and I really want to do it. So maybe I'll just have to go to Aria or something. I don't know. I don't know. But I'm sure we'll let you know. Anyway, we'll try and show you a bit around the Wadigans, um State Forest National Park in New South Wales, near Newcastle, um, sort of Hunter Valley area. G'day, g'day. Uh, hi. We're up in the Wadigan still. Uh, it's a little bumpy. Well, this is the main road through the top. We're just crossed into the National Park at the moment. Um, 
Yeah, I spent the morning trying to sort out internet issues, like just playing with the cell fire and antennas and masks and stuff. And I think I've got it sort of sorted, but we'll um, have to see it. It's not as effective as I was hoping. Um, yeah, so now we're heading out this afternoon just to look at some lookouts. lookouts. <laughs> we're going to check out a few other little campsites that are potential up here. Um, but I don't know if Amanda wants to take the caravan down this road. It's a little bit uh, worse for wear. Yeah, I don't think it's a good idea. <laughs> oh, I think it'd like, be okay. I think it'd be okay, yeah, okay yeah. but not really good for it. Yeah. But then. That's what we bought it for. Yeah, okay, it's we're only going to do another night, so I don't really want to pack everything up to come on this rough road to then set up again for one more night. Yeah, maybe do two more nights. Oh, I don't know. Oh, look at Ari at the back. <laughs> oh, Ari. Oh, dear. I didn't even notice. Oh, still goes. Yeah, anyway. Okay, so we are in the National Park, and yes, the dogs are in the car with us. We are passing through the National Park. They are not getting out of the vehicle. They are not getting out of the vehicle. Let's so, make that clear. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, yeah, we'll see how we go and what we get up to, what we find. And um, obviously, we'll show you. There's a few lookouts. I know a secret little track up here. Like part of the, it's actually part of the Great Northern Walk, but it's really hard to find. Um, and it's got some beautiful, like, mossy rocks and rocks and stuff. So, let's we'll see if we can find that. Cool. Oh, here we go again. Um, yeah, but obviously we'll show you around. Whatever we find, you'll get to see as well. Okay, so we've stopped at the border house dam. Boarding house dam. Boarding house dam. Oh, you can go um, to the river, but river. Oh, huh, there's a river. I didn't even know. Um, just for a quick walk. And... Apparently it's, really, <laughs> apparently it's really nice and nice and short so we'll show you around. Wow, if you are in the Waddingham's area, definitely put this one on your list. There is a little kind of area that you could possibly swim if you wanted to. Um, it's beautiful and clear and really nice easy walk for kids and everything as well. Oh, so what a nice place. I had absolutely no idea that this existed and I'm loving it. Um, I just sort of quickly jump back on and tell you and let you know that there are also toilets and barbecues and picnic um, tables as well as a couple of um, picnic benches near the river so it's a great spot to come over lunch as well if you want to bring something for lunch okay just arrived at the hunter lookout so let's go and show you that This one is along a bit further after the Heaton lookout. We kept driving past that one to this little window and um, looking down over, I don't know, somewhere. In the distance over there is water, so that must be like Newcastle direction. So yeah, I don't know where. I think they possibly is Mount Sugarloaf. I don't know though. Don't quote me on that. Anyway. Interesting view from above. 
green grass, little fire pit as well, barbecue, fire pit type thing. And um, yeah, the toilets are on the other side. Yeah. No camping allowed. Just day use. There's a bit of the Great North Walk here as well. Um, it sort of comes up here and then goes down to the through there and it's all mossy and beautiful. So definitely give that a crack if you're into walking. Mm -hmm. 205 kilometers to Sydney Cove from here. <laughs> walking along there. 45 k to Newcastle. But I'm not keen. Well, that's the end of our couple of days in the Wadigans. Hope you enjoyed it. Um, it's actually a really um, underrated place. Like it's absolutely beautiful and I don't think it gets enough love and attention, which is probably a good thing because then not too many people are here and so it's too busy. But I also think that if you are on the road traveling Australia, or even traveling New South Wales, or you know, I think you should definitely put the Wadians on your list. Um, absolutely beautiful and um, just, Really relaxing, but things to do as well. So really just amongst nature. But yeah, catch you in the next episode. Thanks again. Hit, don't forget, subscribe, thumbs up, comments, questions, all those things. Uh, you know what to do. Thanks. Catch ya.